Hi, I'm Katie D. Tilly, Director of 10 Chancery Lane Gallery, and welcome to the live stream talk on the sculptor Wong Ka Ping. I met Wong Ka Ping in 1997 here in Hong Kong when he was doing a residency at the University of Science and Technology. His exhibition immediately drew my husband and I in, and we went to visit him often in France, starting our collection of his works. When I opened my gallery four years later in 2001, I invited Wong Ka Ping to be my inaugural show. It is now 23 years that our friendship has grown, and I have watched his work year by year and fell in love with it more and more. Here I am in 1999 in Wong Ka Ping's studio. Wong Ka Ping was born in 1949, the year of the founding of the People's Republic of China. He came from an intellectual and creative family. His father was a famous writer who wrote the book Fu Di, translated as Frontline, and was a senior communist cad. His mother was a well-known actress. In 1994, she played Gong Li's mother-in-law in Zhang Yimou's film To Live. He recalls a happy childhood until the Cultural Revolution, where he was sent together with millions of youth to the fields to work under horrid conditions. Because his mother was connected with the theater, she was able to get him as a position as an actor in the Red Army Theater Troupe, where he learned acting. This time in his life, his sense of humor and mis mischievous nature was already apparent. He recounts how he would make faces during the propaganda plays, making the audience laugh while the director would become infuriated. He later was transferred to work in a factory. He was allowed to read and became fascinated by the Russian authors and their storytelling. In the factory, Wong Ka Ping was especially fond of listening to the workers telling dirty jokes. He was, it was only then that he started to understand what relationships between men and women were like, and that not only men enjoyed sex, women did too. Deep se sexual frustration was felt by the whole of his generation. As he had been indoctrinated that everything to do with personal pleasure, including male and female relationships, was counter-communist, the workers' openness and their natural way of speaking gave him a new sense of freedom. After the Cultural Revolution, his mother again jumped to his rescue, this time finding him a post with the Chinese China Central Television in Beijing, CCTV. Although Wang Keping was tired of being an actor, he was happy to finally return to Beijing and obtain the highly sought after residency permit. When a few months later, Char Chairman Mao died in late 1976 and the Gang of Four were arrested and disgraced, the younger generation's political passions were stimulated. Wang Keping was among them. The, the Democracy Wall, established in December 1978, became a political center for the Beijing people, a long brick wall on Chang'an Street in the Shidan district of Beijing. The Democracy Wall became the focus for democratic dissent and was the only place in which the public was allowed to gather to put up posters expressing their political frustrations and to distribute mimeographed underground publication. This period was called the Beijing Spring, and it was a brief period of liberalization in China. During the Beijing Spring, the general public became more courageous about expressing themselves. It was a far cry from the years of torment and suffering of Wang's youth. At CCTV, Wang Keping became a script writer. Whatever he wrote of any interest to himself failed to, get, to win approval. Communist cultural critics were always those who understood the least about art, says Wong. In their hands, he was required to make endless amendments. Because there were no photocopiers, each amendment had to be rewritten by hand, hundreds of pages at a time. One more revision to make it refined, they would say. 
Finally, Wong realized that these CAD didn't really read any of his revisions and were simply fulfilling the protocol required within the hierarchy. To shrug off the endless tedium of rewriting, he, he stopped revising the scripts and instead he would change the color of the cover from green to blue, from blue to yellow. Each time he submitted his script, the censor in chief would call him and tell him, it's much improved now, better than the last version. Try to digest the comment of the leaders and the masses. Make one more revision and it will be perfect. Wong Keping's worst suspicions were confirmed. Foreigners, as well as people from Hong Kong and Taiwan, came to mainland China, bringing with them cassette players and Western music. They would gather in open squares to dance. And, and before long, notices were erected forbidding dancing in public places. The police received continual complaints and broke up the gather gatherings. The youngsters secretly began to throw parties at home and the cassette player became a much loved and precious luxury. When Wong saw that Bai Jing Zhou was trading paintings for cassettes of music, he was very envious. Sure that no foreigner would trade one of his scripts for a cassette player, he decided to become a painter instead. Then, in 1978, he picked up an old rung of a chair and started to sculpt it. He was nimble with his hands, and this moment changed his life. Long Live Chairman Mao, made in 1978, showed a screaming man holding Mao's little red book. It was a parody of his entire generation who shouted the fra phrases blindly. Wong Keping continued to sculpt, trying to find any scrap of wood he could. On seeing Wong's first sculpture, Bai Jing Zhou realized his considerable talent, encouraged Wong Keping because uh, Wong became a passionate about sculpting and soon a wide variety of political and dramatic wood sculptures took up, his, took up in his little home. Once Wong Keping made contact with Bai Jing Zhou's friend, Zhang Zhe, who taught foreign students calligraphy and painting at, at, the, at the university, he asked if he would help exchange one of his sculptures for a cassette player. Zhang Zhe was stunned when he visited Wong's home. Who gave you these? You can't fool me. These are national treasures. They could, not be, they could not be made to barter for a cassette player. That would be a great loss. In 1979, together with Huang Rei Madishong, two of our other artists at Ten Chancery Lane Gallery, Chu Lei Lei and some 20 other mostly self-taught artists, they formed a group called the Stars, Xing Xing, as a political statement of their time. They described themselves as light in the endless black. And all those stars look small, they are in fact huge like planets. The stars group of artists, frustrated by the lack of recognition or any prospect in a tightly controlled and regulated art environment, boldly hung their works on the gates of the National Museum of China on September 27, 1979 time to upstage the official propaganda exhibition, the national art exhibition for the 30th anniversary for the People's Republic of China. Here we see Wang Keping's work, Silence, hanging on the gates. Their manifesto is full of hope and makes me feel that it can still be a beacon to us today. Some highlights I would like to read. We 23 art explorers place some fruits of our labor here. The world leaves unlimited possibilities for explorers. The years come at us. There, is, there are no mysterious indications guiding our action. The shadow of the past and the glow of the future are folded together, forming the various living conditions of today. Resolving to live on and remembering each lesson learned, this is our responsibility. We love the ground beneath our feet. This ground nurtured us. We have no words to express this. They marched through the streets and hundreds joined in, carrying a banner saying, uphold the Constitution. We fight for artistic freedom. 
Here, artist Madachon gives a speech to an impassioned crowd during the Star's March. Wonka Ping's works were the most daring of the group, targeting directly with bold political statements, something that had never been seen in Chinese art. Silence on the right. <laughs> um, silence portrayed a mouth that had been corked, an eye that had been blinded, the head cut so no thinking, to signify the crippling force of the nation. Idol, a portrait of Chairman Mao as a Buddha figure, is perhaps the first artwork made that directly commented on Mao. This was to signify that the millions of people in China merely followed him um, without questioning his actions. Fist shows a giant hand crushing its people. Notice it is crushing a naked woman, a commentary on sexual repression. Chain showed a large hand over a mouth and a chain around the neck. This work has been donated to the M Plus Museum by Dr. Uli Sieg. Even nude female sculptures were in direct defiance of accepted themes in art. When the works were removed by the police, the artists staged a risky protest march demanding artistic freedom. The international press covered the exhibition. This was on the front page of the New York Times, Wang Keping holding silence and a painting by Huang Rei in the background. A year later, the STARS artists were invited to exhibit inside the National Art Museum of China, and the rest is history. With artists Wang Keping, Huang Rei, Ma Deshang, Chu Lei Lei, and even a very young Ai Weiwei, all part of its making. which was also covered in the Wall Street Journal with Wang Keping's idol and chain inclu uh, yeah, included in the piece. In 1984, Wang married a French woman, Catherine Desely, and moved to France. When Wang arrived in France, everything was new to him, and he had to adapt to the unrecognizably liberal climate. As it was not easy to work, he spent time going to the museums to learn about Western art as well as, as old and modern sculpture. Thoroughly briefed, he gained sufficient confidence to continue on his path. As a sculptor feeling quite correctly that there was no sculpture like his, even during the early years of his career, he was sure that he had a unique voice and vision, and he was passionate about following it through. His works during this period are more coarse, and though less political, they continue to scream of frustration. However, in France, he started to feel that the scream exemplified the French art world. Wang Keping works in other materials. Here is a sculpture made from granite in Korea in the Olymp Olympic Sculpture Park in 1988 entitled Wings. Wang Keping admires the natural forms in wood and often leaves his sculptures with many aspects of the natural forms as, as part of the work. He speaks about each piece being a collaboration between himself and what the wood has to offer. In 1999, Keping participated in the Champs-Élysées um, uh, the Champ de la Sculpture exhibition. These three works are more than three meters tall and made from single trunks of, w of a tree. In 2005, he started to explore making works in bronze, works that he couldn't make in wood because of their size or actually thinness. Woman Leaning is now showing here at Asia Society in Hong Kong is in, and is a shape that is not able to be made in wood. It's very fluid. 
Wang Keping begins his works when the wood is still wet and fresh and controls the cracking process as they dry out, putting them in different conditions, or he might put a slash into the back to relieve the pressure so the work won't crack on the front. Wang, Wang Keping is so intimate with wood that the material is inseparable from his being. Such is his understanding of each block before him that he lets the wood guide him as he passes his hand over it. Emerging out of the knots and branches, a, a breast, a curl of the hair, an arm. He even uses the traces of worm tracks found under the bark to ornament the skirt of a woman in a vermicular lace. The flowing of the grain is well thought out in his work. They drip like waves to simulate hair on the back of the head or perfectly accent the curve of a woman's waist. He has said that to take the bark off a, a piece of wood is like undressing a woman. Through his process, his passions are aroused. Thus, the cracks become an important aspect of his works, as you can see here an example of large cracks in the wood that become part of the final piece. This aspect of collaboration with nature and the artist is very important to Wang Keping. As is the grain to add flowing and the knots, branches, and protrusions. We can see how the grain creates a fluid gentleness to his works. The large work, this large work was made live um, as a project with the Chernusi Museum. Sorry. His tools are many. He uses chainsaws as well. He is now 70 years old, but he still refuses to have an assistant, claiming, as he says, that it is like making love. You cannot have someone do it for you. In his monograph, he has included a poem he has written. This is really a definition of his vision in, this, in his work. In this work, you see exactly what that poem says. The rounds and squares, the verticals and the balance. I'll read it for you. Four sides, three ovals, two verticals, one horizontal. Within the round, a square. Within the square, a round. Straight lines, curved lines. Plan, protrusions, softness, hardness, mat, gloss, wood and flesh, nature and intent, material and ethereal, depiction and suggestion, prudence and desire, reservation and tenderness, vigor of youth and rings of old wood, a slash from the edge, a head emerges, between presence and absence, not an eye, not a mouth, the smile of Mona Lisa, isn't it? The black of Africa, the voice of Han, primitive, modern, oriental, and occidental, neither Chinese nor French, yet, without arrangement, concepts fuse with its own vocabulary, the wood speaks. Wang Keping speaks of those rounds and squares and says that they actually are ancient and go back to primitive times, such as this Chinese coin. And we can feel that in this series of work from, called Eternal Smile, a series of iron boxes that Wang Keping made. Um, it's an erotic symbol and a universal form. How his idea um, of purest form evolved, it, it goes back since his early days. These lips go back to the 80s. And I show them to actually emphasize his ability to focus on simplicity. If any sculptor today so deftly explores eroticism, it is Wang Keping. He has the ability to carve shapes into sensual beings, buxom women, or curvaceous, or couples in embrace. 
beings where the wood becomes alive in a seductive poem, or move or in dance. Here the woman flies as in modern butterfly. This work is one meter in diameter, made from a massive slice of trunk. She becomes light in dance, like a geisha in a kimono, she flirts with her audience. He speaks of Zen in Buddhism, but not in a religious way, rather as a philosophy of being, material versus non-material, the physical versus the spiritual, flesh versus nothingness, the yin and the yang. Couples melt together in a simple pairing of that yin and yang. He speaks often about his mother and the yearning he has for her. Mother and child meld into one in many of his sculptures. Here we have a beautiful work of a mother embracing her child. The geometric forms of ovals and rectangles as well as circles and squares find balance through figurative abstraction. Such forms, he states, have been found since primitive times and he, in, and he reinterprets them today. Desire, the giant lips parted with a tongue coming out, is both audacious and comical. And this is that part of Wang Keping that is laden with his very wry sense of humor. The theatrical jokes come to life in many of his works. Here he laughs in defiance and mischief. And we see his sense of humor in the man. He's playing, goofing around in his studio, sitting atop his bird sculpture. Wang Keping's words, works are, are diverse. However, his message remains the same. He opposes conceptual definitions of art and continues to be a dissident artist, as he says. When I came to France, my opponent changed. I fight the trend in today's art. His search and evolution continue in a ma quiet manner, and he is no, in no rush. He feels it is society that needs to change, and that his determined process is part of that. Looking at the flow of the grain of wood on his works as they define the curve of a waist or, or how a knot of the wood cleverly shapes a nipple on a woman's breast, Wang Keping's purest pursuit as a sculptor is unveiled through nature and simplicity. I'd like to thank um, everyone for this live stream here today of Wong Keping and to bring your attention that uh, you can see the artist speaking about his work on the 10 Chancery Lane Gallery YouTube channel. Uh, just search up Wong Keping or also on artpowerhk.com. And I'd like to also thank the Hong Kong Art Gallery Association and Asia Society as well as Art Power HK. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.